do you have high blood pressure? Do you have abnormal blood pressure? Is it maybe labile, meaning is it high one day and low the other and we don't know what's going on? There are many different things as the reason why you have blood pressure and we'll get it to, into this in today's talk and today's presentation. And so I'm excited to share with you some important things on how to lower blood pressure. And so again, I'm Diamond Fernandez. I'm the founder and director of the HeartFit Clinic here. I'm the author of the book, Beating Heart Disease. I have a new book coming out, uh, be out one of these days soon. But cardiac rehab and prevention has been something that I've been doing uh, since 1999. And so uh, it's something I'm very excited about. And so this is uh, a, a talk specifically about blood pressure. And the, the, the big thing I always like to talk about is, okay, well, why do you have high blood pressure? Blood pressure is the number one thing I want you to control. It's the number one risk factor that we can take control over. And if it, and this is something I'm a big fan of, of using medications so that we can heal the artery wall. Remember, arteries are a muscle, not a pipe, and we'll get into that in a little bit. So you have that understanding as then to how we lower blood pressure. And so th this part of it is very important. I, I've, I'm a big fan of lowering blood pressure with medications and then taking him, taking patients off it. Now this is something, a process, sometimes it happens within months and sometimes it takes a year or so and, and everyone's different and, and how long you've been in uh, having high blood pressure or one that, but the biggest thing to understand is, okay, well, what can we do and why do you have it? So when we get into the why side of things, you know, the first thing I always like to look at is, okay, is there something structurally going on? Uh, when I talk about structurally, I'm talking about, is there something structurally going on with the heart? Uh, are there some valvular abnormalities or chamber deficiencies or something that's going on that's something structural related as to why you have high blood pressure? And that would be my first line of attack. And the second thing to look at is there, is there an artery health or function problem? And that's what we do in our clinic. We, we look at the, the health and the function of the artery a lot more detail than what you would get done uh, at your doctor's office or, or even a cardiologist. And so cardiologists, and, and no disrespect to them, they're very important when it's an emergency, but you know, on a preventative basis, they're only looking for advanced stages of disease. So an artery has got to be significantly blocked before it starts to show up on their testing. And, and it doesn't, it's not the same thing that we look at. And so we look at artery health and function. Is there some hormone dysfunction uh, that could be sleep related or stress related, something that's playing around with our hormones that is the reason why we're having some blood pressure issues. So that's stuff that, again, we get into in our clinic. Micronutrient deficiencies. There are some things that are happening inside specific deficiencies in nutrition that are on a micronutrient level as to why you have high blood pressure. And I'll get into that a little bit today. Heavy metals and toxins, exposures, that, that could be a reason as to why we have high blood pressure or even genetics. And genetics is something that you could turn off and on based on, again, what we see on these other five here. So, you know, is there something structural? Like you could turn off and on your genetics based on what's going on. And so you don't always have to go down your parents' path or your brother or sister's path because you're gonna change things. You're gonna be able to change things so you don't go down that path. And that's what we're gonna focus on at the HeartFit Clinic. But we can get into the, do you have some genetic abnormalities? It's the reason why you have that. And so. There's a lot more different things, but we get more into depth when we get in and see you um, during our assessments as well. And so in summary today, I'm going to talk about the anatomy. I'm going to talk about the RAS system. I'm going to talk about foods. I'm going to talk about drug classes, supplements, and I'm also going to talk about the role of nitric oxide. And so I'm going to debunk some myths that are out there as to for those of you that are no nitric oxide, I'm going to get into those things a little bit more. Now, just some quick blood pressure statistics. 25% of the US population, now these are some US statistics, um, have a blood pressure that's greater than 140 over 90. 50% of the population have a blood pressure that's above normal. So we consider this, uh, we, we have a normal range and then we have what's considered hypertension. So 100 million people in the US. And then there's a lot of elderly and African Americans, they, they have the highest incidence. Now, I know there was a study that came out recently that it's better to have, uh, be careful having too low blood pressure. The same things apply here, but men have higher blood pressure than women until menopause, and then gender blood pressures are really the same. You know, and it's a leading reason for prescription drugs and visits to physicians. Imagine that, leading reason. And there are anti-hypertensive sales, drug sales, 
This is old statistics, but 2004, 10 billion. 2010, 20 billion. It's increased double in six years there. And in, in 2020, 30 billion. It's ridiculous how much money we're spending on this. And I feel that medications, again, once again, it's very important early on in this process, but it's important to then get to the culprit, heal the arterial wall, heal the endothelium, heal uh, the problems or the, the underlying reason why we have that blood pressure problem. Now, giving a medication is important to control that. However, can you come off your medications? That's stuff that we like to do at our clinic. And so the biggest risk of having high blood pressure is having the risk of a plaque rupture. And this is whether this happens in the brain, which is a stroke, or in the heart, which is a heart attack. This is the biggest reason why we want to lower the risk of hypertension because it has it gives us the biggest risk of having a plaque rupture or an unstable lesion. So let's get into the arteries are a muscle, not a pipe. 